This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. Now let's configure replication for a virtual machine. So I've got Server01 here in Phoenix, and I want to replicate it over to San Diego. So I'm just going to right-click on Server01, go all the way down to All vSphere Replication ap Actions, and click on Configure Replication. And I'm going to replicate to a vCenter server. The other option is to replicate to a cl cloud provider. So we're using a third-party cloud provider for our disaster recovery site. Then we would select this option. So I'll go ahead and click Next. I'm going to select the target site. My target site is vCenter02. If it's not listed, we could always add a remote site now. I'll go ahead and click Next. And I'm just going to auto assign a vSphere replication server. I only have one in my target site. If I had multiple, I could select a specific one. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Now we're going to select the data store where the replicated files will actually be stored. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit. And I'm going to go ahead and store these files on local 01. And I can actually create a folder hierarchy here on my data store if I'd like in order to store these replicated virtual machines. I'm just going to have it create a folder called Server01 at the root of my data store, Local01. And we can select our VM storage policy. Click OK. And Next. Next we can set our replication options here, Guest OS quiescing. So this has to do with getting a consistent backup. So if you've got certain applications that have different pieces uh, and we want to make sure we get those pieces backed up at the exact same time and that everything's consistent then you can enable quiescing. It lets us know quiescing may take several minutes and might affect RPO times uh, used only for virtual machines that are configured to support quiescing methods. And we also have network compression. So network compression is going to reduce the network bandwidth that is used by the vSphere at replication on the source site when and the target site that can free up buffer memory on the vSphere replication server. Network compression consumes more CPU resources on both source site and the server that manages the target data store. So basically we're trading less bandwidth usage for CPU usage. So if we want to enable that, we can check the box. I'll go ahead and click Next. Now we're going to set our RPO. This is called Recovery Point Objective. So this means if we have a failure, so let's say Phoenix blows up, you know, it's gone. When we restore or bring up this replicated virtual machine in San Diego, how much data or time can be lost? So if I bring this machine up and it's three hours old, is that okay? Now, it's not going to be completely up to the minute up to date, but it can be up to 15 minutes up to date. So we've only lost 15 minutes of time. And then it can go all the way back to being a day old. So Phoenix blows up. We bring this server 01 back up in San Diego, the replicated version. It's going to be to the point in time of a day ago. And in general, the business requirements are going to determine what's an acceptable recovery point objective. And the lower the recovery point objective, the more resources it's going to use, bandwidth, CPU, in order to keep it, keep the uh, replicated virtual machine in your second site or your target site up to date. So I'm going to set this one pretty low in this example. I'll go ahead and set it to... I'll set it all the way down to 15 minutes. Now we can also have point in time instances. This is really cool. So we can not only recover to uh, 15 minutes ago, we can create point in time instances so that we have other options to recover to. So if I enable this, and let's say I keep three instances per day for the last five days. So that's 15 total. And it's basically going to take a snapshot so that we can roll back to that particular point in time. And the most we can have is, you can see it cannot exceed 24. So I can have four over six days. So this means every six hours, it's basically going to take a snapshot of itself, and we're going to have a snapshot every six hours all the way back from 
or every four hours all the way back until six days ago. So that's a really nice option if you have maybe something go wrong with the server. Uh, you know, it, it didn't actually fail. The site didn't fail or anything like that. But, man, something's really wrong with it, and you need to recover back to yesterday. Well, you can do that with these point-in-time instances. So once I've selected my options that I need, I'll go ahead and click Next and Finish. And we can see we enabled replication of the virtual machine, and it's running. So now it'll take a bit to replicate. If we just go over to Summary, we can go down here to VM replication and we can see what's going on with it. Replication status, it's doing its initial full sync uh, in the last sync point, target site, quiescing if it's enabled or disabled, network compression, RPO, and points in time recovery. So we can see exactly where it's at in the replication process.